Something good is going to happen to you. Happen to you this very day. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, sisters. Praise the Lord, mothers. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, daughters. Praise the Lord, you godly women about your father's business. Thank God for each and every one of you. Thank we thank God. and praise God for this wonderful grand opportunity yes. to be with you all today from the north, south, east, and west. Thanking God for all the saints gathering for this wonderful 31st annual Women's Department Spring Fellowship. We give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to our Bishop Elder um, I was going to say Woodrow, but it's Alan Roach. Yes, we thank and praise God for him and our vice, Bishop Johnson, all the other elders on the board, the mothers, saints, and friends. We praise and thank God for you and you and you. Uh, we, as I was saying, something good is going to happen to you, me, all of us, because we're going to gather for songs, for praise, for word. We're going to hear all wonderful things, how we can. Those of us that are old in this thing, how we can go by and get our, you know, self revamped. And those that are new, you're going to have your, you're going to go with your sword, ready to be a godly woman about her father's business. And we're going to go on with the order of service. And at this time, we're going to have our opening prayer and scripture reading by Sister Mary Ann Williamson. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. Lord. Amen. Praise him, Sister Mary Ann. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise oh, the Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for our evening. Thanking you for our life, health, and strength. Thanking you, Lord, for how you woke us up this morning, started us on our way. Thanking you, God, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for which you have brought us. Hallelujah. Yep. Realizing you brought us from a long way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, for opening the doors for us, Lord. Making the ways for us. Hallelujah. Lord, thanking you for how you took our bodies so many times. Thank you, hallelujah. Jesus. How you're giving us a mind to go on. Oh, Lord, uh, how you shed your blood for us, hallelujah, gave us a chance to be saved, hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord, uh, we thank you for this service today, Lord, glory to God, Lord, we're asking you to have mercy on us, Lord, uh, bless somebody in the service, Lord, uh, yes, to be healed, Lord, thank you, Jesus, to be strengthened, Lord, their souls to be revived, Lord, uh, we we need you, Jesus. Yes. Every day, <laughs> every hour of the day, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need you to walk with us, Lord. Uh, to Thank you, Jesus. Us, Lord, uh, and to keep us in the right direction. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord. Bless all of the participants, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Those that's looking yes, for Lord. a blessing. Thank hallelujah. you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for your wonder working power, Lord. Lord, bless those, Lord Jesus, that have a desire in their heart, Lord. That they want to be saved, Lord. That they want to be strengthened, Lord. That they want to be revived, Lord. 
Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord, and touch each and every one, Lord. Bless the service. Bless all the participants. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. And I thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The scripture reading. Sister Marian, do you have your scripture? Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31, 10, uh, verse Glory. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Proverbs 14 and 1. And he said unto them, how is it that ye that ye sort me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Luke 2 and 49. Praise God. Praise God. Don't you feel better already? I yes. told you yes. something good was going to happen. You better stay tuned. Stay tuned. We praise and thank God for that, those wonderful scriptures and that prayer. Hallelujah. Because prayer changes things. We praise and thank God for the prayers of the righteous. That's what's got me here. That's what's got you here. Praise and thank the Lord. And next on our program, we will have opening remarks by our special mother, Priscilla Roach. Amen. Let's receive her Amen. with a hearty amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the matchless name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That last scripture that I must be about my about father's me. business Praise from Luke Lord. 2 and 49. Praise God, saints. I was filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized at the age of 10. And I thank God for Sister Loretta Hope, who did domestic work for my mother. When I turned 12, she noticed I loved to read and suggested that why not read through the Bible that summer when school was out. That blessed my very soul. It really did. For eternity, I love studying and teaching and meditating God's word, no matter what capacity we are in in life. She was just a domestic worker there at the house, but she was about her father's business, showing me that even as a child, we can witness to a child to whatever capacity we're in, Praise saints. The Lord. We need to be about our father's business. And I start my day every day with a prime start, pray, read. Even this morning, I got up at eight and went for my little two mile walk and intercede and meditate. And then I saw this 100 year old man still active and we don't keep our body fit, he said. If you don't, you won't be able to accomplish much. So it's also very important that we take care of our body as well as our mind and feed our spiritual side with spiritual hymns in the morning, being about our father's business. And the signs of the time are everywhere, saints. It's high time, sisters, that we get about our father's business. I greet you all with one of my favorite scriptures, and that's 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your souls prosper. Our sisters have prepared a beautiful, beautiful day for you, as Sister Barbara so eloquently said, something good is going to happen today. And Thank Sister you. Shirley and Mother Letha and all of the committees for the sisters work so hard to prepare something and I'm looking forward to hearing our speakers so I am going to decrease so that you can enjoy the rest of the fellowship of this service praise God thank you mother Roach for those wonderful opening remarks aren't you ready I tell you something's good is gonna happen 
And then we will have our welcome address from Sister Angela Gillespie. Let's receive her with hearty amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise How are you all today? It's so Praise good to Lord see you. We've been excited yes. about the service. We're thanking God for this women's fellowship, this 31st Williams Women's Fellowship. We're glad indeed to be here. We give honor to Bishop Roach, to my husband, Mother Roach, to Mother Letha, to Sister Shirley, to all the officers and the committee. We're again, very excited. Our sister Barbara is so great to see you. Praise the Lord. All the, all the young ladies that are on this platform. We're glad you're here today. We hope you feel welcome that you'll join in with us. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord in the fellowship. We're looking forward to our dear sister Crystal. We thank God for our sister Sharon, for just all the saints from far and near. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister Gillespie, for that wonderful welcome. And now I need a response. I'm looking and searching for someone to, that felt that welcome that will give us a gladly, you know, a cheerful response. Let's see who I can pick. Don't hide your faces now, as I can see. Let's see who I can pick. Who's out there? Who's out there? Who's out? Oh, yeah. Mother Smith, come on, give us a response to that wonderful welcome, because I know you feel welcome. Praise the Lord, everyone. God Praise bless the you Lord. all. So good to see you all. It's been so long, glory to God, hallelujah. Yes. And I do feel welcome, glory to God, after such a wonderful, mighty, precious, glory to God, hallelujah, um, welcome. And I thank God for the opportunity that he made for me to be here. Truly, we serve a mighty good God. He's great, and he's greatly to be praised. And I'm looking forward to the speakers and whatever else is good the Lord has for us this evening. So you all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Mother Smith, for that wonderful response. And we're going to move right along in our program, and we will be favored with a selection from the Young Sisters of NBC. Come on, sisters. Sing us happy.
participate with because we know that God loves a cheerful giver. So we're going to turn it to the hands of Sister Shirley for raising our offering. Sister Shirley? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
truly we thank God for all our sisters, our family as a whole, from far and near, hallelujah. We just want to thank God for each and every one of you, hallelujah. I'm not going to stay before you, Lord, because we got great things coming forward, hallelujah. But this is oftentimes how sisters from Capitol Heights, you know our obligation that we have on today, which is $45. And sisters, the ones who would love to give, you are more than welcome. Um, I believe we have a... Or, or Sister Patrice will put up how you can how you can give as well. Amen. Yeah. So Amen. Um, thank you again, once again, for being here with us, coming together in love. Amen. Thank you, Sister Shirley. I think they're gonna uh, post how you're gonna your different ride right. and thank God for those that gave that for those that desired to give and did not have to give maybe that the Lord will bless you that next time you will be able to be a cheerful giver as well at this time we're going to move into a part of our service I think it says virtual merchants showcase so we have merchandise for people to see I want to see y'all want to see I want to see I hope they got some hats that's calling my name so the home the home Let's see, I'm looking. Welcome to today's virtual merchants hall. Grab those pens and pads and get ready to make note of these saved and sanctified small business owners. You're free to spend your hard earned dollars and cents anywhere you'd like. But first, let's take care of home by supporting our own. Is your wardrobe in need of an update? Or are you looking to add a few items for the spring and summer? Well, look no further. Sister. Beautiful. You know that beautiful hat that you've yet to wear? Beautiful. Because it needs that something. Oh, well, I, I believe I know what that something is and who can help. Try Angela's Creations. Angela's Creations specializes in beautiful one-of-a-kind hat pins. To browse pre-made pins, or if you have a custom design in mind, Please reach out to Sister Angela Gillespie, owner and creator, at 301-318-5383, or you can send an email to AngelaKGillespie at gmail.com. Because of God's amazing grace, why not look like the picture of grace in graceful coverings? Graceful coverings where the owner and creator is Sister Charmaine Smith aims to show that ladies everywhere can be covered from the middle-aged women down to the little girls, from an array of colors to the sparkle and dazzle of sequins and crystals. 
Graceful Coverings wants you to enjoy and look fabulous while being gracefully covered. To browse the Vinnie Beautiful style, check her out on Facebook at Graceful Coverings and also on Instagram at Graceful underscore Coverings. Do you want to look as regal and magnificent as the queen? Then check out Shirley's Royal Brims. Shirley's Royal Brims specializes in women's church suits, hats, and ladies' dresses. She carries hats and apparel from Khaki Co., Benmark International, Donna Vinci, and more. You can reach Sister Shirley Roach, the owner, at 301-218-8412 or by email at royalbrims at yahoo.com. Now sisters, I know you still have room in those closets, but if not, now's the time to purge, to make way for an additional hat and apparel from Cat in the Hat Boutique. Cat in the Hat Boutique, where the founder and CEO is Sister Kathy Smith, specializes in church suits, dresses, heels, pins, vintage and custom made hats. To check out all of her many offerings, you can visit her on Facebook at Cat in the Hat Boutique, or you can contact her by phone at 516-574-2850, or send an email to catinthehatva at gmail.com. Cat in the Hat Boutique, where style meets elegance every time. Moving on to our next category of beauty and health. If we're all honest with ourselves, our beauty and health regimens have taken a bit of a backseat in the last two years. So I'm sure we'll all find something in these next two small businesses. First, we have Heavenly Nature Organics. Heavenly Nature Organics believes God has given us all that we need to help heal with the herbs cultivated here on earth. Their passion and purpose is to provide these sustainable and healing ingredients to the world for your hair, your skin, and your overall being. They specialize in hair care products, skin care products, and holistic care products. To browse and purchase the many products available, you can visit them on Instagram at Heavenly Nature or on Facebook at Heavenly Nature Organics on Etsy at Heavenly Nature Org, or visit their website, www.heavenlynatureorg.com. Looking for a new book to read? Well, look no further. We have the book for you. The Book for Life, Feeding the Soul, Spirit, and Body, authored by our dear mothers, Mother Juanita B. Williams and Dr. Doretha Billy Fouché, of Newborn Church in Rocky Point, North Carolina. The Book for Life will explain the steps to take to bring harmony and health into our physical and spiritual lives. The book is now available for purchase via Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Proceeds from the book sales will support the ministry at Newborn Church in Rocky Point, North Carolina. Spring has sprung and it's time for those home improvement projects that you put off all winter long. Check out the next small business owner. Does your honey need help with the honey do list? Check out TMP Construction, where they provide all things construction services as small as turnkey projects to commercial projects, indoors and out. They service your needs from conception to completion. They will handle it in its entirety from the ground up. If you're interested, please reach out to Brother Tommy and Sister Parthenia Hall, the owners, at 240-581-4533. It's that time and it's that season for graduation celebrations, weddings, and more. So as we move into the next category, please check out the next small business owner. For sound that touches the heart, please check out professional video and sound production. Where the owners, Brother Tommy and Sister Parthenia Hall, services include conferences, weddings, sporting events, commercials, live streaming, and more. They are your go-to source for large 
medium, and small format venues. To contact them regarding their services, please dial 240-581-4533 or visit their Facebook page at Professional Clean Sound. As we move into our final category of professional services, we save the best for last. If you, someone you know, or possibly your employer is in the market looking for consultants to handle compliance, cybersecurity, data privacy, information system security, or to conduct risk assessments, please check out our next small business owner. From strategies to solutions, QOS Consulting Solutions has you covered. QOS Consulting Solutions, where the CEO and co-founder is Sister Stacy Cameron, specializes in a variety of standards and frameworks, including CMMC, SOC, SOX, and more. To get in touch with a security expert, please send an email to sales at qosconsultingsolutions.com or visit their website, www.qosconsultingsolutions.com. On behalf of every small business owner represented in today's virtual merchants hall, we thank you in advance for your support and patronage and may God continue to bless you. Awesome, awesome entrepreneurs. We praise and thank God for each and every one of them. I mean, I saw some things that I might have to like tune in and connect with. Uh, um, I know it was saying about purging your closet. I think it was Mother Rose that told me when she brings something in new, she has to get rid of something old. So that's one way that we have to do it. You know, there are all kinds of ways we can purge. So who knows? Some of those merchandise might be in the giveaway later on in the program. But I failed to mention that in order to be considered for the giveaway, your camera was supposed to be on the entire program. So guess what? Since I failed to mention that at the beginning, from this point forward, if you would like to be considered in the giveaway, please turn your camera on and let it remain on for the duration of the program. Because who knows? You might get a suit. You might get a hat, a hat pin, your bathroom partially remodeled because I don't think it would be entirely remodeled, but who knows what's in the giveaway. So let's all participate in Jesus name. And so at this time, I tell you, have you been enjoying this service? I've been enjoying the service. Something good has been good to me and I hope it's been good to you. So at this time, we're going to move forward and get to the nitty gritty a good part. If you haven't already enjoyed yourself and felt like cutting your step, after we get the introduction of the speaker and we get the solo, and then after the word, surely you'll feel like patting your feet and cutting a step for Jesus. So at this time, we're going to have the introduction of the speaker by Mother Sharon Williams at following a solo from Sister Ashanti Key Williams. And after that, will be our speaker. Amen. Let's see them. Praise, Praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Here. Hallelujah. I have been enjoying myself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everyone, in the precious name of Jesus, yes. I have enjoyed myself immensely so far. Praise the Lord. Thank and you, I Jesus. Thank you for your energy, Sister Hall. Yes. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He's blessed us to see this beautiful day, and we are just rejoicing in him. So I give honor to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Praise God to our overseer, Bishop Allen Roach, and to Mother Priscilla Roach, to our vice presider, Bishop Johnson, and to us, Mother Johnson, and to my dear pastor and companion, Bishop Nathaniel Williams, to everyone in this Zoom meeting, and to everyone under the sound of my voice on this evening, we just greet you in the precious name of Jesus. My duty this evening is to introduce the speaker, and I can truly say that I am so delighted to and honored to be able to, to do this, this task. I have known this beautiful, amazing young lady for just about all her life. Her, mater her maternal mother, Sister Sharon Archilla, and myself have shared her as her daughter from childhood until now. 
I'm so happy to see your growth and development into such a wonderful, amazing, virtuous young woman that she has become. She's always been a willing worker in the ministry of helping in whatever and whatever capacity she finds her hands to do. She's an awesome musician and you know, you know that. She loves to play the, the bass Lord. guitar. She loves to play keyboard and sometimes she loves the drums, but just about any instrument that she just she, um, she can find and put her hands on, she will play it as if she's been playing it forever. She's exactly. married to this wonderful young man who just happens to be my son, Elder Jason Nathaniel Williams. They have two beautiful children, Janiah and Jason Jr. She's a very educated young lady. She has a master's degree. She has traveled to so many places in this world. And wherever she goes, she's never afraid to share the good news of Jesus with others. If you are on Facebook, you can see how she has been a blessing in her new role of employment and how she is blessing others, letting their dreams come through. She's a praying woman and enjoys studying the word of God. Proverbs 31 and 27 sums up something I think about her. States that she looketh well to her ways of her house, of, I'm sorry, of her household and eat it not the bread of idleness. She's just a sweet, amazing person and I just love Great her job. so much. So at this time, if you are guessing who she is, guess no more because I would like to present to you the speaker of the hour in the person of Sister Crystal Nicole Williams, my beautiful daughter, please receive her in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, sister. Beautiful, beautiful. I've got a destination. Hallelujah. In my view. The road may be bumpy getting there, but I'm pressing through. I will enjoy this journey, no matter come what may. I'll become better and stronger. And wiser every day. I've got a vision and a purpose, a divine destiny. It may not look like it right now, but faith ain't what I see. It is the things I hope for, believing that it will come. And no matter how long it takes, I know God's will shall be done. His will is that I prosper. His will is that I win. His will is that I fight on. His will is that I live. Oh, he gave me what I needed when he gave. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. 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 I do indeed give honor to Hallelujah. my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is my everything. I do want to give honor to our overseer, Bishop Alan Roach, to our vice, uh, Bishop W.H. Johnson Sr., who is celebrating his birthday and uh, his That's appreciation right. on this right. weekend. So happy birthday to him. Yes. I uh, do want to give honor to my pastor, uh, my pastor, Bishop Nathaniel Williams, uh, who is not just my pastor, but my father in love. And I truly thank and praise God for him. And I appreciate him giving me permission to speak to our sisters on today. But I also appreciate his encouragement. Um, I was able to stop by the house and speak with him on this week. So I thank and praise God for him. I do want to give honor to all the board of bishops, all of the elders, ministers, the holy men of God. I want to honor my wonderful, amazing husband, Elder Jason Nathaniel praise Williams Lord. Sr. Thank and praise God for him, him setting me up today and uh, him and uh, all of his support and everything that I go to do. I really appreciate him. Uh, I want to thank and praise God for uh, Mother Priscilla Roach, who uh, stands beside our wonderful overseer, Bishop Roach. Yes. I thank and praise God for my first lady and, and my mother in love as well, Mother Sharon Williams. Uh, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. I love you for it, Mother. I love you so much. Um, I do want to also honor the Newborn Church Women's uh, President, Mother Letha Roach. I give honor to the Vice, uh, Sister the Shirley Roach, to the entire committee, to all of the sisters in the background who put this beautiful program together, all of the officers. I do want to give honor to our wonderful MC, Sister Barbara Hall. Let's just give her Praise a wonderful hand. Amen. Praise I really Lord. enjoyed her energy and that, that, that life that she gave us on today. So we thank, thank and praise Jesus. God for her. And also to all the mothers, all the sisters, all the young ladies, to any brothers who may be in our midst, to you all again, I say praise the Lord. I'm truly excited just to be with you all on today, truly humbled. Um, and when Sister Shirley Roach reached out to me, honestly, I was in awe because as I began to just kind of, you know, hear her asking me about speaking, I said, well, there's so many other capable and eligible individuals who can speak to the sisters on today, but I truly am, I'm humbled and I'm honored and I count it as a privilege just to share with my sisters on today. So um, I do want to just not belabor the time. I have some notes, have some things that uh, God has truly just given to me. And I, I have so much that God has given, but I know I can't give it all to you all of this evening, but I do ask that you I'm all have to me I'm as, as I you know, speak uh, from the oracles of God and whatever he has given to me, that you all be receptive and that you all pray with me, that we all grow and build and gather from what we're going to learn today as we talk about a godly woman, about her and her father's business. So Praise I'm going to just start with a word of prayer briefly, if you all will join me. Father, I just come before you saying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lord, as we are before you, Lord, we praise and we thank you for who you are, for how you are, God. Lord, we worship you, God. We we honor and extol you and exalt you, God, just for you being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, and as we are before you, Lord, we ask, oh God, that you be, Lord, in our midst, Lord, wherever we find ourselves today, God, Lord, that you will dwell with us, that you will be with us, God. Lord, that you will allow your presence, oh God, to overshadow us, oh God. Lord, and as we are together, we pray, God, Lord, that you will strengthen us, Lord, encourage our hearts and our minds, God, as we search your scriptures, as we look in your word, oh God, how we ought to be about our, in, your, in your business, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you, God, again, just for this time of sharing. And we ask, oh God, that you just continue, Lord, to bless each and every one on this line, each and every one, oh God, who's in this meeting, Lord, that you will, oh God, you will give them the tools that they need, Lord, to move on, oh God, in life and to be about, hallelujah, them and your business, God. Lord, these things we will continue to give you glory, honor, and praise for. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. 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 So, Amen. Uh, again, the topic is a godly woman about her and her father's business. And I know we have a number of scriptures to read, and uh, I, I appreciate um, how the mother read a few of them earlier today. And I'm just going to read two, and then we're going to read throughout the scriptures as we go about 
Um, but Proverbs 14 and 1 says, every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. And Luke 2, 29 says, and he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. When I think about business, we look at uh, the terms of business, what it means to actually have a business, to run a business. A business is, a, is an entity that essentially offers some type of service, it offers a product in exchange for money, in exchange for you know, some positive cash flow. And uh, most businesses start, they aspire with the hope to be successful. You know, most businesses, of course, don't start and, you know, get off the ground and hoping that they're just going to be in debt and just flop and, and not be successful. But businesses want to be successful. And yes. what the main goal is, is that, of course, as they provide, you know, the, the sustenance to their consumers, well, they really want the stakeholders to benefit. So who are the stakeholders? It's usually the people who own the company or the business. It's those who patron. It's those who have some type of share in it. So stakeholders can be a number of people if they you know, have invested in the company. Stakeholders are those who have you know, the better good. They wanna see the company do good. So we're gonna start thinking of business. We're gonna look at, at what our lives look like if we start entertaining lives as a business. And so I, um, I, I wanna just kind of maybe even go back a little bit. I, I remember growing up, I uh, grew up in an older church um, outside of Inspire Word before my grandmother and I came over to Inspire Word, we were part of another church and uh, mother, she took me to uh, this church with her on the west side of Chicago. And the church consisted of a whole bunch of seasoned mothers, you know, the, some of the more mature mothers. And uh, I probably was the, the youngest person that was there. Um, I know I was. And uh, with that, I know, you know, the, the teachings of then were a lot different. And I believe that even for me, I grew up with some misconceptions of what it was to be a saved young woman, what it was to be a virtuous woman, because even some of the examples that I kind of had before me and looking at the more mature seasoned mothers of the church, these mostly were retired women. These were women who, you know, had gone and worked their heyday in the field or had done whatever. And, you know, even just living in the home with my grandmother for a while, I saw that my grandmother, she, she had a job and she came off of her job to take care of me. And she would cook and she would clean and do the laundry and she would stay at home all day and just be at home all day and wait for my grandfather to get home after he came from his job and she'd have dinner ready and you know, just all those things. And when time came in the evening, we would leave and go to church, you know, every now and again, we go to the grocery store, maybe go to the bank, but we go back home. And that's, that's all I had. And then I thank and praise God, even for my mother, when um, she got pregnant with my brothers, you know, when she had them, uh, God blessed her and afforded her the opportunity to be at home to take care of her husband and her children. You know, but as I began reading the scriptures, I said, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I think I, I'm missing something here because I guess in my mind, I kind of thought, oh, I'm supposed to just be at home and take care of the kids and, you know, have the dinner ready. And, you know, I, I started just kind of playing into that. But I said, wait a minute. I, I began reading the scriptures and I started seeing Praise something God. else. I started seeing what, what God had said in his word about a woman being virtuous. And so I want to just uh, talk a little bit about the virtuous woman, because if we are looking at an example, if we're looking at you know, a woman about her and her father's business, this is the perfect example that the scriptures have outlined of how we ought to be about our own and our father's business. So let us go to Proverbs and I'm going to read the scriptures a little out of order because I want them to be together so that we can understand the concepts that go along with each set of scriptures. So let's go to Proverbs 31 and 10. And I don't know, Sister Stacy, maybe Sister uh, Patrice, I just have one picture that I wanna share if I may. So let me see if I can share. Only the host can share in the, in the meeting. Is there, is there a possibility that I can share this I'm one forward. picture? All right. Amen. Let's see if we can get to it. All right. Praise God. Okay. So this is a, a Cartier Sunrise Ruby. This was one of the most rarest rubies that was found. Uh, 
and it actually sold for $30.3 million in 2015. It boasted a trio of a world record. It had the highest auction price for Ruby, the highest price per carat for Ruby. And if you know anything about Cartier, they are a high-end jeweler. It was one of their most expensive gemstones. And the, the worldwide chairman of the Soothby International Jury Division, if you know anything about Soothby, they, they're big in real estate and a number of other companies um, and things that they do. But uh, the chairman, he said in over 40 years, I cannot recall ever having seen another ruby exceptional in this size, possessing such an outstanding quality, an outstanding color. And as I began to read the scriptures, it said, who can find a virtuous woman for her prices far above rubies? If we're looking at price here, I guess the question is, what would you aspire yourself to, to be worth? What do you think that you are worth? Would you say that you're about 30 million? I don't even know if, if a number of us have even seen that much money. My God. <laughs> but would you say since the price is far above rubies, would you say you maybe about double that? Look at it, uh, 60 million. Let's, let's, maybe you say, hey, I'm, I'm worth it. I'm, I am in the trillions. I am in the billions. Hey, I'm, I'm up there. You may have a mindset of what you might actually be worth. But we're going to look in the scriptures and see what our price, what our worth really is. So I want to talk about the virtuous woman and her works. Let's, let's start uh, in verse 13. And what I want to do first, I'm going to talk to my sisters collectively, and then I want to talk to my married sisters last. And so let's go down to verse 13. I'm going to read 13, 19, 22, 24, and 18. And it says this, 13, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She layeth, 19, she layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. 22, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. So we already see that this woman is putting in some work. She's got some things going on with her hands. She's getting all involved with the different materials that she has access to. If you know anything about wool, wool comes from sheep and flax is grown from the ground. And it says she seeks it. We don't know for sure whether this woman is outside in the farm shearing the sheep to get the wool. We don't know if this woman is outside on her knees pulling up that flax out the ground, but it's showing us that she is willing to work with her hands. She's willing to do what it takes to get what she needs to make whatever product she's looking to make. And if you know anything about wool, wool can be used in clothing, linen, even flax as well for clothing. But one thing about flax is that flax can actually be used in woodwork can be used in carpentry. This is something I didn't know because, you know, when I go get flax, I, you know, get flax seeds to put in my breakfast and my granola or something. I, I didn't even know it could be turned into something else, but it can be used to make product, to, to create something. We don't know if this woman is making stairs, if she, you know, is out here building furniture because she has access to these things. She, she is obtaining these things. She, she, she holds the dis, this, the distaff, the spindle. She, she's using tools. So here's the thing. This woman is using her hands. She's, she's making products. She's taking care of, of the things that essentially she is getting and she's turning it into something else. I really appreciate the showcase that you all had because it really showed how you all are working with your hands. My sisters, you all are putting in the work, you're getting your products, you're making something that people essentially can receive and utilize. Look, that's a business. That is a business. Come on. You are about your, and, and we're going to get to your father's part in a minute, but you got your business, okay? And uh, let's look at the, the scriptures. We're, we're back in uh, 22. She maketh herself coverings and tapers. So she's making her clothes. She's making her own clothes. Verse 24, she maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants. So she's making a profit off of what she is doing, what she's putting together. 
And then if we go up a little bit in 18, it says she perceives that her merchandise is good. This woman knows what she's making, what she's putting together. It ain't no mess. It ain't no junk. She has, has, she has quality product that she is putting out. Just like the showcase show, my sister, some of you all, God has given you a vision, a focus, an ability. He is giving you tools to make things, to create. God, I, you know, I really appreciate God because he uses creative people in creative ways. I don't know how to make no butter, I, I, uh, a hat pin. Look, I'm, I'm not quite that, that, you know, industrious, but you all, God has already given you all some, some vision, some things to, to put into play. And, and let me say this, with, with the virtuous woman, she's not just doing things for free. She making money. God has an ability to give you something that can show that you can get wealth from it. You can receive proceeds from it. There, there's an ability that God gives to people. And I've come to find, you know, as, as I was doing research, I said, you know, some of these, these things, the things that um, are existent in the world, it just came from one thought. People who have businesses, it was just some over, overnight idea and it blew up into something major. Sometimes God is dealing with you. He gives you one thought. He gives you one idea and everything else to go with it. He gave you the, the ability. He gave you the tool. He gave you the products. He gave you the resources to get what you need to make it and then allow more to come in. Come on. God, God, God has a way of setting you up. And not only is it that when you have the product and you have, you know, the things that you're doing that, you know, you're okay. Now you can, you know, you gaining consumers, people are buying from you. But here's the thing, the, the, the father's business comes into play when God starts giving you exposure. People start seeing you. People start yeah. seeing your product. They start seeing what you do. They start seeing who you are, what you have. And it's not solely just about the product, but ah. they're gonna start seeing who gave you this idea, who put you in this position, who, who is you know putting you in, in, in a, a mode of being able to conduct business in the worldly aspect, if you will, in the sector Praise with all these the other Lord. merchants, all these other people. And when they start doing business with you, they can see the difference. They'll be able to see, mm, she ain't like everybody else that I did business with. Oh, she, oh, her customer service is excellent. Ah. She is above, I mean, the woman got it going on. <laughs> We're talking about a godly woman, about her and her father's business. Come on, let's uh, let's continue on. I want to uh, go down and um, let's talk about her care for others. Uh, we're going to start at verse 14. I'm going to read 14, 15, 27, and 20. Verse 14, it says, she is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. Verse 27, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. If you know me, you know I enjoy food. I am, I would, would guess maybe what people would call a foodie, but I enjoy traveling for food. I enjoy finding new foods. If you, again, my mother-in-law, she told you that I have traveled to many different lands. And of course, when you go to a different country, the first thing most people want to know is what the food tastes like. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> and um, when I when I read this verse, it says she is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. When I think of food that's somewhere else other than around home, sometimes when you are in certain areas, your area is really only particular to a certain type of food. If you, you know anything about Chicago, you know, everybody come to Chicago for pizza. Well, I don't always want pizza. I don't wanna always eat the same thing that's around me. She bringeth her food from afar. Sometimes when you go somewhere else and get something, you're looking at variety. You're looking at something different. It's not always the same. Maybe her family wasn't eating chicken and rice every night. Maybe it wasn't, you know, lamb and cumin. They, there may have been some variety that this woman was bringing, but it says she's like the merchant ships. Merchant ships don't carry mess either. 
if anything, if you know anything about the merchant ships, it would take a long time. It would cost money. They would, you know, go over the seas and dock in certain places. And those ships would essentially port and the people would trade. Those who people who would come and port with the people who were there, they would come and they would trade different goods uh, to receive the other in return. And when I look at it, I said, you know, this woman is taking a trip. She's not intimidated to go and travel. She's not intimidated Hi. to go and find what it is that her sister essentially, not her sister, her family essentially would want to have or what would, would benefit them. Maybe sometimes, you know, I, 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 when I grocery shop, I go to three different stores. And sometimes there's something that I'm looking for that is not in my neighborhood. I will travel for it. Why? I want my family to have it. I want them to enjoy it. I want them to taste what it is that I'm thinking of making, what I, you know, the new dish that I want to try. I, I want my family to have that. I'm looking out for their well-being. And sometimes, again, for nutritional valued items, sometimes you got to go get that. It may not always be, you know, in your neighborhood. So she travels for her food. She bringing her food from afar. And she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. So she's making sure not only is her family taken care of, but it says her maidens. If you know anything about the, the scriptures, maidens essentially were her servants. These were people who were helping her out. These were individuals who were essentially working for her. I said, Lord, I need to look into this status. This woman, <laughs> look, this woman had some help. And I, I, I want to highlight this because she's rising while it's night. She's up before anybody else. She's preparing whatever means for them to all get themselves together for the day, for whatever needs to happen. So she's up before everyone else giving meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. I wanna talk about the maidens part because I think the people who surround us are so important. The people who help us are so important. And when you are blessed, when you have the ability and the opportunity to help others, to bless others, to give to others, do so. If God has blessed you, again, you know, you, you, this, this virtuous woman, she out here making money. She's doing things. But she ain't forgot about the people who's been helping her. She ain't forgot about the folks, you know, who, who are doing things on her behalf. So she's giving to her maidens as well. Going down to verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. You know, I, 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 love, I love this verse. And if you know me, I enjoy bread. I've always been a bread lover. I, bread and butter has been my thing since I was a little kid. My grandmother let me go in the, in the house and that's, that's what it was, bread and butter. And if you think about bread, I, I, I don't want to talk about the bread of life. I don't want to talk about the bread <laughs> of heaven. We just gonna talk about regular bread. Bread. Regular bread. bread, regular bread. So let's go to a restaurant. Let's say you're going to Red Lobsters, Olive Garden, Carabas, whichever one is your favorite. Most of these restaurants, they give you free bread, okay? Bread. It's free. They don't got to pay for it. They, that's the first thing they typically set down on the table. And the bread is, it come out warm. It, it smell good. It tastes good. It's all fluffy inside. <laughs> and I, I started thinking, I said, this woman looks well to the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Bread tastes good. Bread tastes real good. But after you didn't set up here and ate all this bread, they bring out the free bread and you just eating and eating and eating. You didn't ate all this fluffy bread. It didn't got into you and you can't eat your meal when it come out. You, you tell the waiter, I'm, I'm sorry, can you just bring me a to-go container? Because you can't even yeah. eat, you, you can't even consume the, the stuff that, some, that you essentially went to go order. Because you went to Olive Garden, you wanted the eggplant, you know, you want, you, you went to Carabas, you wanted the, the chicken marsala, huh? You went, you knew what you were going for, but you ate that bread and now you don't want nothing else. Look, sisters, don't eat the bread. Let me tell y'all this, let me tell y'all this. There's so much fluff, so much free fluff in this world. It is, it come a dime a dozen. You got social media apps, you got this movie, you got this show, you got this. It's so much to get into. It's so much that you can entertain. But then you start 
entertaining. You start getting into the free fluff and you spent all your time and ain't, ain't did nothing that you were supposed to do. You ain't, ain't took care of nothing you were supposed to take care of. The dish is still in the sink. The, ain't nobody Jeez. eating dinner because the Jeez. meal ain't get cooked. Why? Because we were scrolling. Look, I'm, I'm guilty. I, I can't talk about nobody else. I can talk about myself because we scrolling on Facebook. We scrolling, we scrolling. <laughs> Seconds turn into minutes, minutes turn into hours. And then next thing you know, you look up and be like, ooh, I didn't put them clothes in the dryer. <laughs> Come on. Don't, don't eat the bread of idleness. Don't take the free fluff because it's there. It's there to distract you. It's there. It, you know, and I, I remember... Minister Pugh, I, I really appreciate, you know, just his his words that he had um, spoken a little while back. And he said, social media, it's a thief of time. It will wow. steal your time. And I, I appreciate it for the good qualities because I'm able to advertise on it. I'm able to keep in touch with the saints. You know, those things are good. I don't consider those things idle. But uh -huh. I found myself kind of getting into, you know, some of these videos. And I'd be like, oh, how did they do that? Oh, how did it, you know... I ain't going to work and, and use none of this stuff that I just looked at. That's the bread of idleness. Don't eat the bread, sisters. Don't eat the bread. Don't, Don't eat, eat the bread. bread. <laughs> Look, she's she looking looking well to the ways of her household. There are things that essentially need to be done. This is for the, the married and the unmarried sisters. There are things that need to be done in your home that you essentially can be doing. You can be cleaning up. Maybe it's a wall. You'd be like, oh, I've been wanting to do that axe and wall. Do your axe and wall, sis. You know, do, do the things that will benefit. Do the things that essentially are going to help in the long run. Again, going back to the business, you know, if this woman ain't got no time to be eating no bread, <laughs> not the bread of idleness. She got a, she got other work to do. She's about her and her father's business. You and your house, that's you and your father's business. Your well-being, everything that, that, that pertains to you is you and your father's business. And man, let's uh, hmm, let's go on. Her care for others. Her care for others. Hallelujah. I want to talk about uh, verse twenty. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth for her hands to the needy. I I really love this because even if we read the Bible, we can see across the board God's desire for people to help others. It's not just solely about your own personal thing. It's not solely just about you and yours. The Bible says to seek someone else's, not just your own. The Bible right. talks about, even if we look in Matthew, how Jesus, he was uh, talking about the separation of the, the, the do's and the don'ts, the, those who did and those who didn't, the sheep from the goat. And what he said is that essentially those who you know, he said, yeah, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty. You gave me drink. You know, I, I was, you know, sick and you visited me. Those, those things that, that uh, God had pointed out, those weren't about what the people was, you know, doing for self gain. It was helping someone else. And again, God has blessed you when you are in a position to do for others, do for others. Because yes. the, thing, the thing about it is that you will never gonna be able to outgive God. Never. You ain't gonna never be able never. To, to do beyond what the Lord will do. But if God has given you something, let me tell you this, God has given some of you all a vision, a burden for people to be taken care of. God has said, you know, hey, start this food bank, start this food pantry, start, start putting together care packages, take it to the homeless. She stretches her hands out to the poor. The Bible says, the poor you'll have with you always. Jesus said that. He said, you always will have the poor with you. And there's another scripture in Proverbs says, he that lendeth to the poor or give it to the poor, he lendeth to the Lord. Look, I want to lend to God any day. I will lend to the Lord any day. Because, yes. and it's, again, it's not solely just about what you're going to get in return, but his repayment plan, what God will give you will supersede anything that you would have ever thought that you could have gotten or even you know as, as i've heard the analogy oftentimes they say you know you're holding on you know to a seed you know when essentially if you give it up it could be a harvest you you you're, you're holding on to something that essentially if you let it go is really going to be not just a blessing to someone else but more of a blessing to you 
she reaches out her hands to the poor. Yay, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. Taking care of others is God's business. That's God's business. When, when you put yourself again in a position to, to give, I, I am a witness. I have seen just the miracles of God, not just in, in my life and other people's lives, but, but just even the intrinsic reward of that, that I received just from seeing God did this. God blessed him. God did. And, and, and God may have used you. That does something to you. That does something for you. Hallelujah. Let me, Thank let you, me get Jesus. back to my notes. Let me get back to my notes. The stretch of her hands. Mm, this woman is so giving, talking about a, a godly woman and, and about her and her father's business. Mm. Yes, yes. I tell you, again, it's, it, when God gives you that passion, when he gives you the ability to help others, do so. Do so. Mm. Yes. Let's, let's move on to, to this woman and uh, the next thing that she, she does. And this is, this is my passion. So I'm not going to spend too much on it because this is not, this is not going to be one of those uh, financial counseling sessions. This is not the, the uh, investment coach session, but I want to talk about her and her investments. Let's talk about her and her investments. Let's look at Proverbs 31, 16 and 21. It says, she considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. Verse 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. This has got to be one of my favorite verses, verse 16, because if you know anything about real estate, real estate is essentially consisting of land. And I'm a real estate broker. I, I work in real estate. That's what I do. And real estate consists of land and anything that's built on the land. So any houses, structures, it's all considered to be real estate. This woman is out here doing big things. She considers a field. She is looking at a piece of land. She is considering, and if you know anything about land, land is attached to wealth. If you look at the scriptures, if you look at just the history of land, land was really just a, a, a something that was utilized where God was able to promise it to people. He gave them a right. He gave them a possession. He made covenants with people in certain places that he gave them when it, when it came to land. Mm. God was able to utilize land to give people wealth. It was a, a myriad of ownership and, and ability to have privilege when it came to, came to certain areas. This woman, it says she considered a field. She considered a field and buyeth it. When you consider something, you're looking at it good, you're making sure you're checking it out, making sure it lines up with what you need, making sure it's, it's right, making sure you're getting into the right thing. And she, and she bought it. This woman went and took some money, whatever she had, and she bought this, 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 this field. Let me say this, sisters, sisters, don't go take all the money and go buy all the hat pins from Mother Gillespie. <laughs> you gotta save something sometimes. You gotta put up something sometimes. It says she considered a field and she bought it. She had some money, she had some money saved up. She didn't take it to the merchant's tent and go buy the, the nicest caftan and roll. She, she decided to hold on to some money. Let, let, me, let me read a little bit. She said, she considered a field and buyeth it. Sisters say, budget, budget. Look at what you got coming in. Make sure that you have considered everything that needs to be taken care of because you're going to need it for the long run. You're going to need it down the line you can't every dollar that you get in you can't spin it out because what happens what 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 may take place you know they always always talk about you gotta save for a rainy day look you gotta hold on to something sometimes but she decided to, to save some money and said she considered a field and buy it there with the fruit of her hands so we already know the woman has been working. It said with the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. We already know this woman has been working with her hands because she didn't went and sold her girdles to the merchants and she didn't got something from that. She didn't went 
you know, and holding the, the spindle, the dish staff. She, she's working with her hands and she then brought in some fruit. And now this woman is gonna take what she has earned. She's gonna take her fruit. And now she's gonna go and plant a vineyard. And the thing about the vineyard is that whatever she's gonna put in the ground, as long as she does what she needs to do to make sure that it's consistent in terms of making sure it will grow, it's going to yield her a harvest. That is investment. If you look at that, if you look at that, that is investment. This woman is taking something that she has earned and she's putting it into something else that is going to yield her return. That's investment. My sisters, my sisters, again, going just back to wealth and, and prosperity and just the, the whole real estate piece of it all. If you can, if you are able, buy you some land, buy you a house. You don't necessarily have to be married. If your finances, listen to me good, if your finances and your life line up, you can go and buy something. Because let me tell you this, it will essentially over time build. It will build wealth. It will gain, it will gain you something. I was having a conversation with an accountant a few weeks back and he said, the only thing that consistently appreciates and value over time is land. Why? He said, because ain't nobody making no more of it. He said, God has made all the land. He said, and there's only so much that people can have. So as more people come in the world, you know, as, as you know, more of the world is taken, that means that less people are able to have it. If you were able to, to invest in property or go get you some real estate, so let's go, go do that, go buy your house. I have a client that I'm, I'm working with and I, I really truly appreciate her and just how, how she has decided to, to take on this, this task, but she's not a married sister. She's, she's a single young lady. And she said she's been saving her money. She's been putting aside, just been kind of holding on to things. And she told me, she said, you know what? I want to buy this property. She says it's gonna be my first home. She said, when, when I do get married, whenever, you know, my husband comes along, I'm going to rent my property out. That's going to be her investment property. This woman is about to get into something and God is about to, I, I just see, you know, already, I know just how, how things work with the field of real estate, but I believe God is going to bless her with some profit. She's going to rent it out and she's going to have a profit. My sisters learn how to save budget and invest. Verse 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her household. If you know anything about snow, if you know anything about the winter, it represents a time when it's cold, it's dead, it's stagnant, nothing is growing, nothing is coming in. So even, even though she bought her field and she has planted it, well, you got to give time for the field to rejuvenate. You got to give time for it to re-energize so that when the next season comes around, you can actually plant your harvest and, and get what it is that you're looking to get. But it shows that it's a time of, of cold and stagnant when, you, when you're dealing with the winter and nothing is coming in, but she's not afraid. It says she's not afraid of the snow for her household. She's not afraid because this woman has been putting stuff up. If you, if you know anything about folks in the South, you know, I, I, I grew up, again, my grandmother was from Arkansas and she used to give me some insight as to what they used to do with going and planting a field or planting, you know, crops, different, you know, vegetables and stuff. And what she would do is sometimes just bring it in because granny, granny used to make some okra or, you know, had some collard greens out in the back and she would bring it in the house, you know, once it had, you know, all harvested through and she would clean it up, put it in the freezer. So when laid on down the line, there, there you go, Sister Hall, she would jar and freeze. Laid on down the line when it's cold outside and she can't get no fresh greens from nowhere, huh? she already had them. That's a form of saving saving she and she's not afraid she's not afraid of it but here's here's the spiritual revelation in this she's not afraid of the snow for her household for all her household are clothed with scarlet when we are going through seasons sometimes things shift in our lives sometimes things change in our lives and the snow I, look i live in chicago i don't like the snow i I don't know for the life of me, I've, I've grown up in it, but I do not enjoy the snow. I don't enjoy being in it. I don't enjoy driving in it. I don't enjoy operating in it. I don't like the snow, but I'm not afraid of it. If I got to go out and do some business, I'm going to go out in the snow. But the thing is, she's not afraid of it. When things change in your life, when things shift, the one thing that you do have consistent is Jesus. 
when things are not looking as though they shouldn't or the things that they should, you know, should be looking like when they're not looking like they should be looking like look she's not afraid she's been she's been doing something let me let me talk about the scarlet i want to talk about the scarlet really quick because god gave me this this insight scarlet is, is a red it's, it's a red color and it represents power it represents wealth when the winter has come it says all of her house are clothed with scarlet when this family went through changes. When they went through things, it said all of her house was clothed with scarlet. This woman, and it don't say, we're gonna get down and talk about her relationship with God, but I can only imagine she was praying over her family. I can only imagine she was empowering them. She was teaching her children scriptures for when things came against them. She was putting herself in a position to operate and to empower her family. They are clothed with scarlet. Her family is being empowered through her ability to pray, through her ability to, to help to, to do what she's doing. She's looking out for her and hers. They're clothed with scarlet. Not only did she say, not only, again, you know, did she put up naturally, but she's putting up spiritually. This woman is doing things in the spirit to make sure that her family is empowered. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's go down. Let's talk a little bit again more about just, um, mm, yes, Lord. Your house, you and your house and your family. That's you and you and God's business. You have to make sure when the devil tries to come in like a flood, we know the scripture said the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. It is your duty. You got to be praying. You got to be praying. You have to put yourself in a position to know what God said when things change, when things shift, when things not seeming right, when stuff is go a little cold, even when we talk about cold. Because God said in his word, he would rather that we be hot or cold. When things are cold, when things are cold, it means, man, some, something's not right. It means that you, you're not on fire for God. Sometimes things will try to get a little stagnant in your relationship with God. Yes. Things will try to, you know, the, the things of the world, especially when, when things come in and they try to discourage you, they will try to put your flame out. They'll try to put your fire out. They mm -hmm. will try to knock you off your block. Yes. But it said she's not afraid of the snow. Look, when stuff try to come against you, you can't be afraid of that. You got to learn how to pray. You got to learn how to fight through. You got to learn how to press through. Hallelujah. Yes, she's not afraid. For all of her household are clothed with scarlet. All of them. You know, there have been times when things don't look right. and be like, come on, we got to pray. Come on, children. Let's pray. Come on, husband. Let's pray. We got to pull him sometime. Come on. Let, let's talk to God. Let's 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 get in the face of God about this. She's not How afraid because she knows what she's got to do. She knows what her position is. She knows her role. She knows. Hallelujah. Knows. She, hallelujah. This is her her father's business. When again, with, with, when the house is not right, God is not pleased with that. God is not happy with that. God God wants His business to operate and function fully, like a well-oiled machine. Hallelujah. She's not afraid of that because mm -mm, she knows what to do. Let's let's go on down a little bit. Let's talk. Let's talk about her character. Let's talk about her character. Proverbs. We're going to read 31, 17, 25, and 26. Verse 17. She girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. Verse 25. Strength and honor her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. Verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Strength and honor are her clothing. Mm. This is what this woman puts on every day. This woman knows all the tasks that she has in front of her. She knows everything that she has to accomplish, everything she's got to get done. She knows she got to go to these merchants and sell these girdles. She knows she got to get up and get these kids food. Mm. She knows everything that she's got to do. And sometimes we get weary, we get tired in our bodies. We are natural, we are, we are women, we are human beings. But it says strength. She, she, she puts on strength every day. She gets up and she, she has the mindset saying, you know what? I know people are depending on me. I know somebody needs me. I'm, I'm going to get up and I'm going to get myself together today. I'm going to do it today. Even, even sometimes when she's faced with adversity, the Bible don't say that she was, but we live in a world where we know that we are. We know that challenges come, we know that things come, but the way that she encounters, the way that she handles it, 
says strength and honor. She's doing things in an honorable way. She's not snapping off on everybody who she come across because she had a, 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 a bad night because she was up at three o'clock in the morning. Because <laughs> she was up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, providing food for everybody else. When she gets to the merchant, she ain't, you know, mm, leave me alone, get out of my face. No, no, she's, she's, she's operating in a, a flow of just honor and strength. Ah, yes, honor and strength. 17, 17, she girded her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She's preparing herself for the work. She's strengthening herself. She's getting her, her, herself together to do what she needs to do. Mm. Verse 25, strength and honor her clothing. She shall rejoice in the time to come. 26, she opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. It is, if you know anything about a law, a law is a rule, you're not going against it. A law is in place, it is to be enforced, it is to happen, and that is it. Says so she opened up her mouth with wisdom. This woman is so connected to God, we're gonna get there again in a minute. This woman is so connected to God that the wisdom and the insight that he gives her, she's, every time she opens her mouth, every time she's speaking to someone, God is giving her something to say that, that will enhance a situation, that can help a condition, whatever is going on. When she opens her mouth, it comes with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's so kind to people. She knows how to talk to folks. Look, if you're gonna have a business, you gotta know how to talk to people especially if you have a front facing business. You can't just, you know, operate in your kind of way and just say any old kind of thing. That's the quick way to be, you know, sign on the door, close permanently. That is the easy way for you to not make no money, for you not have no patrons, easy. You can't just be out here, just, you know, flying off the lip. No, no, no. This woman, she, she's opening her mouth with wisdom. She's got something from God to impart. She's, she's, and, and even if you know the scriptures, when it talks about wisdom, it says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally. She's been in the face of God getting something. This woman has a connection like no other. Every single time she opened her mouth, words of wisdom flow. We, and we could take a lesson from that. You know, they, they say, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. We need to take a lesson from this woman because every time we open our mouths, it should be kindness. It should be wisdom. It should be like, mm, child, shouldn't, shouldn't be none of that. We, we know we can do it in a heartbeat. Come on, we can talk about somebody in a heartbeat. But we ought not be using our mouths to talk about others, to talk slander, to talk negative, to say, you know, all kinds of things against each other. We need to use our mouths to build one another up, to speak kindness to speak, you know, to, to speak a word into someone. someone, someone that may cross your path is looking for a word. They're looking for help. They may be in a desperate situation. I've, I've come across so many people that even, even some of my clients, they start expressing some of the things that they're going through. And right there in the parking lot, God starts giving me something to say to them. We, we have to have prayer. We have to have prayer in the driveway sometimes because people are going through so much. In life, this life, the way that the world is set up, it is breaking people down. But it don't cost nothing to be kind to people. Nothing. It don't cost you nothing to, to, speak, to speak a word, to speak something over someone. You're like, you know what? You look so beautiful today. I, I remember Elder Bandy. I really, really miss Elder Bandy. But I remember one, one service, he had said, he had, uh, went to a cash register. And he had asked the young lady, said, you got any more of those? And she said, any more of what? He said, a smile and brighten that woman's day up, made her smile. <laughs> those, are, those are the things that essentially we need to possess, the characteristics that we need to possess. We need to know how to be sensitive to the spirit of God, to hear him, to follow his leading. Because there have been people I've come across in the grocery store and God said, go back. God told me that day, he said, go back and say X, Y, Z to someone. And it changes their life. And you never know the kindness that you have exuded because of the spirit of God that's in you, because of Jesus operating in you. 
what that would do to that person, whether God will draw them through you, whether you have planted a seed or whether you have watered a seed that God wants to essentially pull that person out of bondage, pull them out of the, the muck and the mire that they're in. God wants to use you, but you got to learn how to use your mouth right. Hallelujah. God wants you to be in a position where he can use you all the time, all, all the time, time. Right. Mm -hmm. all the time without question, without fail, wherever you are, God wants you to avail yourself to him, to speak, to say the things that Thank he essentially Lord. wants you to say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And let me talk about this a little bit too. Because we talk about the law of kindness and it being to other people. But we talk to ourselves as well. We look in the mirror, we do self-talk. We ride in the car, we be talking to ourselves. Look, look, you got to speak kind to yourself too. You can't be out here helping everybody else. And then, you know, speaking against yourself, talking yourself down. Ooh, girl, you this, ooh, you that. You know, I've heard people, you know, say, ooh, I'm, I'm such an idiot. Oh, I'm so dumb. Don't do that. Don't do that. You got to speak. You got to speak positive about yourself. Right. Because how you going to help anybody else if you're not helping you? You can't do that. Right. Right. You can't speak do that. Life. Come on. You got to, you have to be. Be in a, exactly words of affirmation. I love that's just a few. You have to look in the mirror and say, I am who God said I am. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am yes. the works of his hands. I am blessed. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I am the yes. lender, not the borrower. You have to speak what God has given, even in his word about who you are. Hallelujah. Because even, even this, because even the Bible talks about how, you know, the weak ought to say they're strong. Let the weak say that they're strong. Even if you feel weak, even if you, you feel like you're not quite where you need to be, start speaking it. Start speaking it over yourself. Start saying it until you see it. Say it Amen. until you see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, uh, let's, let's go on a little bit. I just got a little bit, little bit more and I'll be done. Let's talk about this woman. I want to talk about her marriage and her husband. I want to talk to my married sisters on today because your marriage, whether you believe it or not, your marriage, your man, that's you and God's Amen. business. Hallelujah. Amen. That's you and the Lord's business. Let's talk about it. Let's uh, read 31, Proverbs 31. I'm going to read verses 11, 12, 23, and 28. 11 says the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good all and not evil all the days of her life. Verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Verse 28, her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he prays of her. So my sisters, we don't really know a whole lot about this man. We don't really know other than, you know, him sitting in the gates with the elders. We don't really know, you know, all of what he does, but we know that he's in a pretty prominent position. The people of the community know him. They know who he is. But I per venture to say, we don't have a Bible for this. We don't know for sure. But I per venture to say that this woman has had a lot to do with where this man is sitting. If we know in the scriptures before, if we read uh, in Proverbs 18 and 22, we know the Bible says that whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing yeah. and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So we don't know for sure whether or not he held this position before he was with her or after. But sisters, let me tell you something. The way that you are affects how your husband will be. How you carry yourself, how you adorn yourself, whatever you do in life. It can either be good to the man or it can be bad to the man. Even if we look at the scriptures, Proverbs 12 and 4, it tells us a virtuous woman is the crown to her husband, but she that maketh shame is as rottenness to his bones. I'm a, I'm a researcher. Uh, I've gone to college and I, you know, whenever I look at different things, I want to know, you know, a little bit more about it. And I said, Lord, how can bones be rotten it happens it actually happens it's a condition it's called osteonecrosis and it's where it's been some kind of form of disruption 
of blood supply to the bone. The bone can no longer, I guess, essentially operate in the way in which it was. It can't function like it used to. But I really began to just kind of look at this man. And again, we, we don't really see much about him, but we see all of what this woman is doing. We see, you know, again, him sitting in the el amongst the elders, he's in the gates. And I say, you know what? In, in the event that he did not hold this position before they got married, I'm pretty sure that there could have been some pillow talk going on. He come home from, you know, wherever he was and she's encouraging him. Baby, I think you should go for that position. I think you should should look into to the next thing. I think you should, you know, see see what else might be out there. Or did you did you talk to Elder so and so? He said it's a seat up here in the gate. <laughs> I can only imagine there could very well have been some encouragement, sisters. It is your duty to encourage your husband. It is your duty to push your husband in a positive right. direction. Going back to just the the whole notion of you know, not really being essentially the way that a woman should, rottenness to his bones. If, if you're not really in a position to do or, or you're not doing for your husband as you should, that thing can break that man down. So the things that essentially you think you would want to experience in your marriage may not necessarily be happening because it's not quite going the way that it should on your part. Maybe you're not quite, again, using that law of kindness. Maybe you're not doing something on your part, but it's a twofold. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. I'm going to talk about that too. I'm going to talk about that too. Let's look at it. She will do him good and not evil all the days. Well, let's go back to 11. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I prayed about this and I said, Lord, I said, so if, if I'm doing good, you know, he, he'll have no need of spoil. I said, well, what does it mean that he shall have no need of spoil? And I said, well, it means he just gonna go bad, God. <laughs> if I don't, if I don't do him good, and, I, and and God actually gave me a revelation. And if you know, if you've ever heard the the um phrase, the victor to the victor goes the spoils. Well, spoils were actually referred to as something that was taken from someone else after a war. It was the the reward. It was the goods that they got from after something had actually taken place, and. Uh, I began to look at it and I said, it says the heart of her husband of safely trust in her. Everything that this woman is doing in the house, her husband is trusting her with it. Every bit of piece of money, the land that she went and bought to plant her vineyard, the children are being taken care of, the maidens, the girls she's selling, every, every piece of whatever's going on in the house, that man trusts her with it. And it says, so that he shall have no need of spoil. A good man is gonna take care of his regardless, but having no need of spoil means that he don't have to go and do something that he shouldn't be having to do to get what the family needs. The woman is taking care of the business in the home. She's not, again, she's not going to spend all the money. She's not going to, you know, just making havoc and wreck of everything, but it's showing that he have no need of spoil. He'll have no need of any necessity of any physical thing this man don't need food he don't need to go out and and get someone to to uh he don't need to go steal from someone he don't need to go and you know kill anybody to get what his family needs he doesn't he doesn't have need of spoil but rather since she has put everything in place she has done an exceptional job of setting this man up he trusts her he his heart safely trusts her so that he don't have to go out here and do anything illegal. He don't have to do anything Amen. that's un on, not that's not honorable to God to take care of his family. Says so she will do him good and not evil all the days. All the days. Of, all the days of his life, of her life. Let me let me say this. I think it's just so underrated when we talk about <laughs> sisters and you know, not sisters, but men and women just husband and wives just being good to each other you see all the negativity in the world you read you know this article you see that you know drama just so so much going on so many things going on but it's so underrated in the society to need to be a good woman to a good man and a good man be you know good to his wife and I know the scriptures say there's none good you know Jesus said there's none good but God 
if we look in Psalm, we remember in 37, 23, how it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So good, when we talk about good, someone who's trying to do right, someone who's ethical, someone who's moral, someone who's, who's, who's trying to, to build, do something for his family. Says, do your husband good, do him right. I, I, I look at just how, my God, again, society has underrated this. And when I look at the evil that exists in the world, and I'm gonna I'm go here, because we talk about temptation and existing, it being in, in existence for a man, but temptation in this world is just as existent for a woman. There are people out here who go after married people. And it's so funny because they will see the ring on your finger, They'll know that you belong to someone else, but the devil is so shrewd. He'll try to make a fool out of anybody that he can. Uh -huh. And the, the, the whole saying is, you know, and again, they don't care if you're married or not. As a matter of fact, they'll say, oh, the, the heart of the chase, the, the sweet of the catch. Boy, if that don't sound like the wow. devil. And I get, I get it. If, you know, you're unmarried, you know, on each side, you know, unmarried sister, unmarried, you know, brother and the brother's pursuing the sister. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and catch that sister, brother. But don't be trying to catch nobody else's woman. <laughs> just imagine. Just, just, just imagine this. This woman, now imagine, she is known. Her husband is known in the gates. So clearly these people know who he's married to. These elders that are sitting around, they know who this man's wife is. Because again, the word of mouth is the biggest form of advertisement. They'd be like, oh yeah, the sister who uh, sells the, the girls. Oh yeah, the lady. I mean, they mind you, they know who these people are. And I just find it so wonderful just <laughs> to see that they have built themselves a wonderful, you know, relationship with each other. I'm sure that, you know, again, because everything is intact, he trusts his wife. They have such a beautiful relationship, a wonderful connection. But you don't think other people see that? You don't think these men are looking at this man's woman? Like, oh, she is so industrious. Oh, she is so successful. She's in winning bought a field. Ooh, she's making the girls. Oh, she's, you know, making her own clothing. Those would look real nice. They, they, they riding down, you know, maybe got their chariots and they riding down the road and they looking at her field and be like, oh, she's got really, really lovely crops over there. She's got some, some beautiful things in her vineyard. You don't think they, they see that? They see that, you know what they're saying? They, they say, oh, I need, I need, you do need me a woman like that. They ain't saying that they need a woman like that. They saying they want her. They say they want, want his woman. Sisters, wow. she want him good and not evil all the days of her life. Don't put yourself in a position. These men are, are ruthless. They will try to catch you up. They will try to be like, sister, let me, let me come over here, talk, slide over here. Don't put yourself in a compromising position. Because again, just as the temptation is strong for the man, it is strong for the woman too. We can't just put it all on the man and be like, oh, he go out and you know, do all. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It happens for sisters too. So it says his, his heart safely trusts in her. She'll do him good. Don't be entertaining these people. Look, and the devil, the devil will send you the equivalent of Potiphar's wife. What Potiphar's wife was to Joseph, the devil will send to you every day. That woman tried to break that man down, said, lie with me every day up until the point where she even, you know, tried to grab him and get his coat and he ran away. The enemy will send you somebody who looks nice, who smells good, tall, dark, handsome, bald head, whatever you like. And the enemy will try to make a fool out of you. But don't do it, sister. Don't do it. Let your husband's heart remain safe and trusting you. Mm. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he prays of her. Her husband appreciates everything that she has done, everything that she's doing in the house, everything, every sacrifice that she's making, everything that she is doing. He, he, he is praising her for it. He's praising her for it. Even the children. When the children grow up and they notice what you've done for them, you know, they notice, oh man, my mama made so many wonderful sacrifices. My mom did this, my mom did that. They will praise you. They will be appreciative for what they experienced. 
because not everybody in the world gets that. Not everybody is able to have those experiences. But this is God's business. This is you and God's business. You and your husband. You and your home. An appreciative man, I never know, it says an appreciative man will honor and acknowledge your hard work and diligence and making sure things are the way that they're supposed to be. And that man has a part too. That man has a part too. And again, we don't see all of what he might have been doing other than sitting in the gates with the elders, but that man had a part too. In your home, again, I appreciate, you know, how um, they had brought Sister Parthenia and uh, Brother Tommy's uh, business up and talking about, hey, you got a honey-do list? There's some things that you may ask your husband to do, like, hey, honey, I mean, you're looking well to the ways of your house. Look, there's some things that I can't do. I can't, you know, go and rot out, you know, the pipe. That, you know, I, can't, I can't go and do certain things, but I'm looking well to the ways of my house, but my husband is appreciating. I'm not just letting the, you know, the toilets overflow. You know, something happened. Baby, can you look into this for me? He appreciate, he'll appreciate that. I mean, I, am I creating more work for him? Maybe. Maybe. But I'm... <laughs> but I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. He's trusting me, he's trusting me. I wanna last just talk about her and her God. If we look at verse 30, it says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Favor is deceitful. I actually um, looked up this word because I said, well, Lord, Favor, how can favor be deceitful? But there was a Hebrew word for favor. It's called shin or shien, C-H-E-N. And it usually refers to charm or graciousness, acceptance or kindness. And I said, well, these words all sound like what we want to be. This is, this is what the virtuous woman is. She's charming. She's gracious. She's, you know, elegant. Again, the, she has the law of kindness. I said, but it says favorite is deceitful. If we're looking at charm and just how one may carry themselves, people act real good. People have a way of putting on a show, putting on a front. They're not always who they may seem to be. Favor is deceitful, a way that the woman that she could very well be very charming, but that don't necessarily mean that she's got all the qualities and the morals and the values inside. She may, you know, gracefully, you know, glide across the floor. And, you know, we have our beautiful spring garb and fascinators. That don't necessarily mean that she's everything that she really should be. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. I guess so, I, I guess so, I'm, I'm, I'm so interested. I, so um, I guess for lack of better words, just kind of intrigued. I sometimes see some, some videos on social media when I'm scrolling from time to time. And I see these, these people, because it's ladies and it's men too, but I see them and they, they do these, um, these makeup videos and they show what the person looked like before and then they show what the person looked like after. And I said, bruh, that don't even look like the same person. It's a complete, I mean, it's <laughs> night and day. They look nothing yes. alike after they have, you know, put everything on and have, ch you know, changed their, their whole face. Amen. And I said, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Sometimes people just focus so much on the outward appearance. And I'm not saying that we, you know, should not, you know, make ourselves look good, get our hair done, you know, keep upkeep ourselves. That is important. Come on, sister, that is very important. Amen. But I said, people are just focused on the wrong thing sometimes instead of, you know, focusing on what's so important. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. They're focused on, you know, this, again, this outfit, this piece of makeup, this, you know, ooh, this is the, the best thing that is going to make my, my curb appeal instead of really looking at what Jesus, what God said was a great, great price. We're talking about the even the inner man. He said, let me go to the scripture. Mm. The inner man. Because if you if we look at the scriptures, I'm gonna go to the scripture here. And Peter. Mm. It talks about the hidden man of the, the heart. 
in first Peter chapter three. It talks about wives being subject to your own husbands, but it says, whose adorning let it not be of the outward adorning, plaiting of the hair, wearing of the gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Again, we talking about God's business. He's the main stakeholder here. He says, this is a great, a great price. More people are so concerned about, again, the beauty, the, you know, the, the way that they look. Oh, this is, this is how I'm going to be today. Let me take my selfies because I'm good at taking a selfie too. But all for what? It says, a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. All this time, we ain't heard nothing about this woman and her relationship with God. We haven't heard how she, you know, prays two times a day. She fasts two times a day or two times a week. We don't see that she studies the scriptures on a daily basis. We don't see none of that. We see none of that as it relates to her and her God. But the one thing about it, it says, a woman that feareth the Lord, when you fear God, when you reverence and respect him, not just, not just afraid of the consequences and repercussions for what you don't do, but when you have a true love, a true respect for your God, you don't wanna do anything that will displease him. You don't wanna do anything that's gonna hurt him, anything that's gonna harm him, anything that's going to cause him to not allow his face to shine upon you. You wanna please God. You wanna do everything that it takes to make it right with him. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Again, her husband and her children are already praising him. These people in the gates, they see, they, these folks know what's up. She fears God. And the fact that she fears God, God is giving her everything. As we go, have gone through these scriptures, God has given her the ideas for her business. God has given her the ability to take care of others. God has given her the ability to invest. God has given her the ability to save. To, to do things. God has given her the ability to be kind to people, to, to speak a word. God has given her the ability to, to be that other part to her partner, her, her partner in business, her husband, and do all of what she needs to do for, for, for him. God has done this for this woman because she fears him. And, and because you fear God, everything that you go to do in life, everything that you go to touch, God will bless it. God will allow so many wonderful things to come about from it because you fear him, because you want to make sure that he's good, because you're taking care of his business. God is going to take care of you and yours. So it, the end result here, Proverbs 31, the last 29 and 31 says, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou hast ex excelled them all. There are different ones, many, many ones who have done some virtuous things. We talk about setting the bar. We talk about setting the standard. This woman is the bar. This woman is the standard. She is, she is above head and shoulders above everyone else. All of what she has done, all of what she has decided to take on, she excels everybody else. It says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her. Praise in the, the Lord. Let this woman enjoy, and not in a selfish way, not in a, not in a you know, self-serving way, but let this woman enjoy all that she has worked on. The fruit that she's growing in the garden, the clothes that she's wearing that are that, that's beautiful, the everything that she has done. Let her enjoy it and let her own works praise her. Your life will speak for you. Your life, everything that you go to do, as long as you have feared God and you have put him first, it will speak for you. So my sisters, as I close, we see what it is to be about our and our father's business. Let us make sure, and this is not to look at, at the scriptures, it's not to look at this as, oh man, you know, a downer. Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing enough. I'm not, because <laughs> when I started reading, I started looking, I said, God, I'm not, I, I got some coming up to do. I have some coming up to do. Amen. But this is to help <laughs> us see how we ought to go about being about us in our father's business, how we ought to move forward in life and treat our lives, treat 
our business with God, treat everything that we go to do like business. Take care of it. Make sure it profits. Make sure your network is good. Make sure you in the black, not the red. You want to make sure that your business is successful. You want to make sure, again, that your relationship with God, with your husband, your children, everybody that is involved, that you, being the virtuous woman, are about you and your father's business. So that's all I have on today. I appreciate you all again for having me. I ask that you all just continue to pray for me. And we pray one for another that we all be Amen. that God awesome. will have us to be in Beautiful. Jesus' name. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Bravo. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Great example. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. That was mighty. Praise God. We praise Amen. God for the seasons of a virtuous woman. Beautiful. Because some of the scriptures that she talked about, you oh, know, God. they may be relevant last year or maybe relevant in your life this year. You know, I was even thinking about how when Elder Hall took sick in 1991, some of the things that I was reading really became relevant in my life. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And Elder Hall's house is still standing. I did not pluck it down. Hallelujah. Because he was sick. You know, I praise him. I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, she was talking about the different dispensations of time, how maybe sometimes you may have to go out in a field. Because, you know, it may not be the season of planning. So you got to find the season. Find where it fits into your life. We thank God for that, Sister Crystal. Praise the Lord. You know, I thank God for the introduction of Sister Crystal by her mother-in-law, Mother Sharon Williams, and that awesome solo from Sister Shanti Williams. Praise God. A vision and a purpose. We praise God. And so at this time, we're going to go to our closing remarks and words of encouragement by our mother, Letha Roach. I think she's the president of the Women's Department. Let's give her a hand. Praise and praise and praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise Amen. and praise and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I am so happy. Lord. Thank the Lord, Mother. All today, I tell you, my heart is very joyful. I don't know. I'm just full up. Called truly, I can say God have <coughs> blessed women's service this afternoon. Let me go. I want to. I really want to thank. Uh, let me thank Mother Hall. Mother Hall, you come out so bubbling and happy. Lift this service up this afternoon. I Praise the Lord. You, you set a bar for us this afternoon. You always Thank you, Jesus. I met you years ago. You haven't changed. You still on fire for the Lord. Praise and the Lord. I'll be the glory. Praise the Lord. I want to thank you just for being our MC. Amen. I say, I give Mother Hall a round of applause. So she Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise amen. The Lord. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise him. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then I want to thank Sister Mary Ann Wilson for the prayer. Let's give her a round of applause. And, uh, and Sister Mary Ann Wilson again uh, uh, for the reading. I praise God for her. And thank God for Sister Angie Glisson for that welcome address. Let's give her a round of applause. Praise God. Thank God for her. And I want to thank Mother Smith. You know, for the uh, uh, the weapon for the weapon address, the system there uh, are the respond. Address. respond, respond to the weapon. Mm -hmm. What happened, mother? You might, mother, you have to unmute yourself. Unmute your mic. Okay, thank God. I tell, you, I tell you, we we just had a great time this afternoon. Yes. I'm just full up to the top, saints of God. God. Oh, Hallelujah. Good. I just went over the audience. Everybody, I want to thank everybody for being online this afternoon. For I haven't seen for years on account of this COVID. I won't call no name. I'm going to miss someone's name. I want to thank God for everybody on this Zoom 
that, but it went in uh, the 31 years of, for this birth, for the uh, women's uh, service. I say, I thank God for that. And I want to thank God for Sister William for that solo. God knows. Praise God. She sung me. My, I was so happy. I said, I was so, because I know everybody enjoyed that solo. Amen. And the young Lord. sisters, what they did this afternoon, I'm telling you, thank God for them for participating this afternoon. And I thank God. Let's, uh, that's, uh, Sister William, I tell you, did, uh, I want to thank God for Mother Sharon Williams for introducing that speaker. You yes. did such a good yes. job. Mother Williams, I thank God for you introducing your thank daughter. -in you did such a wonderful job. When a mother-in-law can say such a great thing about her daughter. -in -law. Amen. Amen. And you said it from your heart because you know you had such a wonderful daughter-in-law. I Amen. thank God. That. And I want to thank uh, uh, Sister William for bringing us the word this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Not that virtuous woman. Amen. I, you, I <laughs> haven't been so easy for me coming up to be a young married uh, person, but I thank God I've been through the meals, but I'm still here, saints of God. Thank I you, say, Jesus. I thank God for my Bishop Roach. He yes. encouraged me to stay in the rain, the storm, and everything. But Praise I thank the Lord. God, my God kept me through my marriage. I could have been divorced years ago. Praise but God, the Lord. Six hour marriage, and I've been married now 64 years for this Ooh, one day. God. Oh, Praise him. him. Praise him. Praise him. Amen. 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 I thank God for him right now. He, my husband, not so well. He has been mentioned. Y'all keep praying for him. Yes. But I'm still trusting God. Thank I'm you, Jesus. God. Yes. Can, God still is a healer, Saint. Amen. God. Yes, you know, I don't care what you have to go through with. I I feel like I'm one of them virtue women because I've been around and I've been through, but God kept me and kept me safe through it all, saints of God. Yes. Go back on him. I'm keeping pray. I prayed up. I'm still praying for my husband to be saved. I don't care yes. what comes or what goes. God is still able, saints of God. I want to thank God for everybody online this afternoon, the on Zoom. I want to thank y'all for taking your time out and being with us, the women's department this, this afternoon. I I can't give God enough praise and honor. And that speaker, I can't get over. Sister, you keep on speaking. You keep on accepting everything. Thank you, Lord. Because People need to hear you didn't you didn't take no shortcut. You just told it like it was. I Praise said, God. thank God for I believe God God has really blessed us the women's department this afternoon. I want to thank everybody for being and serving with us this afternoon. I, I'm I'm praying you pray for me and I'll be praying for y'all. Thank God for taking our time for just being here with us today. From far and near. Some of it I haven't seen y'all for a long time, but I, I can say I love everybody. And I see so many, like I say, I haven't seen for so long, a long, long time. I miss the uh, being in person with you all. But this way, God had a fix way all the sisters can get along to get, can see one Thank another. you, Jesus. I just looking over there. Um, I kept searching, pushing back and seeing everybody. And I said, my heart was so happy to let you know. The Women's Department want to thank y'all for joining us this afternoon and being with us. Now, let's, let's pray. Let's get everybody around. Folks. Let's praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 Now I'm going to turn it back over to, I guess, um, Sister Hall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those wonderful words, Mother Roach. 
64 years old. Oh, that is awesome. 64 years. Yes, Lord. You had all kinds of seasons of being a virtuous woman. Oh, my goodness. You had to put some of all of that to you. My Jesus. My Jesus. Yes, praise Lord. God. Yes, Lord. You can be found in the scriptures, I believe. We <laughs> praise and thank God for the words, or for those encouraging words. You know, uh, I was thinking about uh, Sister Crystal again. She said, uh, travel for the food, but don't eat the bread. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> yes. I made all kinds of notes. <laughs> but I tell you, this has been awesome for me. So now we get to another part of our service. Now I got to see who have their camera on. I've been checking y'all out, saying, Let me see. I've been looking to see who been, who been hiding and who been coming forth and going in and out. Because we getting to the part where uh, we're going to do the gift giveaway. Uh, Sister Armani Kasimbe, have you been looking sis, to see who been on? Have you been checking them out? <laughs> oh, yes. Praise the Lord, saints. Can y'all hear me? Amen. Yes. Oh, good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes, I have been checking uh, throughout the service, making sure cameras have been on. We have yes. a double bowl of names here. All right. <laughs> Is my name in the bowl? What's, the, what's her name? Is her name in the bowl? Yes, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you, know, you never know who's gonna get picked. Um, would you like to show the um the gifts? I take. Can you show <laughs> the gifts, please? Uh, let's just keep in mind that um, uh, when your name is called, you have the option to pick whatever you want first. Okay. So you don't have to, uh, we're not going to say this is yours. You have the option to pick out of the five gifts which one you want. Okay. And so uh, we thank Sister Hall. She put our, put us up there real high with suits and all that, but <laughs> not this year. The Sisters of um, Capitol Heights, we just want to show the love. It's something we do yearly that we like to show the love right, to our sisters right. from far and near. So but when we come back on board and face-to-face, -face, then we go back to that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, and the gifts will be mailed to the ones that are far, but the ones that um, who receive um, a gift that's local, you will have to come to the church and pick it up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I tell you, Sister Patrice, can you show the items? All right. So we have up here three weekender bags. Are you going on Why a trip so anytime soon? You may need one of these. <laughs> we have yes. a nice bag along with the toiletry uh, oh bag with it. We also have a floral option. We also have a, um, I'll let you screen here, a nice Oh, um, yeah, cheetah print here yeah. for you. And then we also have some wonderful, wonderful uh, items that you can use in your home. Self care, time with God. You have a nice mug and devotional journal set. Really? Of course, the pen comes with it. You don't need anything <laughs> else. Just you and Jesus and maybe a cup of tea. <laughs> All right. And then there's another one. We can go number five. Excellent. They're both beautiful. They will come. Beautiful. With beautiful. Bags to come with them. All right. Are we ready? We have some yes. Lisa pulling names for us. Yes. Lisa. <laughs> nice bowl. <right? laughs> Our first row. like the everything item that you had the pen the pad the, uh, which one the whole uh, four, the whole four, four, or five. Four, or five. four or five four or five which one number four or five four or five the last one four four, four. okay right, thank y'all nice. make sure you mail it Shirley. congratulations <laughs> our next Oh. Sister Mildred Hansen. Oh, All right. <laughs> Which one would you like? Number three. 
three. Praise the Lord, Saints. How are you? Oh, all right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, how's everyone? So beautiful Wonderful. to see you all. Wonderful faces. <laughs> well, I like the one with the mug. Which one was that? What number was that? Uh, we have number five available. Number five. Okay. All right. That sounds nice. Thank you so much. Of course. All right, our last one. Oh, we have two more. Two more. Two, oh, sorry. Two, sorry. <laughs> Number four. <Second> last one. <laughs> Will be our sister Patricia Frazier. Oh, 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 mother, the mother, the mother, the mother. The mother. <laughs> no, nothing more than the mother. The mother. <laughs> Your mother. Where she, she was on here. She was Your mother here? She was on there. I saw her. She was on. Uh huh. She was just on, but um. There she is. There. Where? Where? She was on here. I saw her. There she is. There she is. Hey, praise the Lord. We have number one and two left. The striped weekender as well as the floral. Um, let me do the floral. All right, those number two. Last but certainly not least, number two. Sis, mother Estelle Rouse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was good. So you got the last person, the striped one. Yes, the striped weekend. The striped weekend. Hey, that's fine with me. <laughs> um, yes. So um, in order to send these wonderful um gifts of love. And um, we will need addresses. So if you are able to do a direct message to um, yeah. me and put your address in there, I will collect it so that it gets to the right place. So give me your name. My name is Imani Kasembe. <laughs> so you can send it to Imani Kasembe. I M A N I space K A S S E M B E if you cannot find it. In the that was good. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you need it repeated again? I'm also, my camera's also on, so you may see me as one of the on-camera people. I am A-N-I-K-A-S-S-E-M-B-E. -S -S -E Amen. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Amen. Thank you so much for participating, having your cameras on if you were able. Um, all right, I'll pass it on back. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God for all the wonderful giveaways. Woohoo! Nice gift. Nice gift. I'm sorry. Although they weren't suits, I'm sorry if I sold it too high, but um I tell you, Jesus passed my way today. I don't know if he passed your way. He passed hallelujah. I was blessed from the beginning to the well, we're going to have the prayer, and I'm sure I'm going to be blessed by that closing prayer. And that's going to be from our sister Elizabeth Pugh. Come on, sister Elizabeth. Pray us out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are just so grateful to God for this Thank beautiful, you. beautiful, beautiful event. It's just a beautiful thing for our sisters to come together. Um, throughout time, God has allowed me to understand the power of sisterhood and anytime I can have an opportunity to embrace it I want to embrace it and see the fullness of it 
Well, I'm, truly God has blessed us ab abundantly and I want to be so obedient to the spirit if Sister Shirley would not mind and Mother Letha would not mind. But the Lord, as I was uh, going through the service, it came to my mind when I was, I knew I was going to do the closing prayer and the Lord laid on mind to tell the sisters to just put one thing on your mind right now. Just one thing Praise on your mind. Just one thing that you've been asking the Lord for. And one thing God reminded me of, uh, and I'll start, you know, that there is an intimacy with the Lord that women have that is like men, a man cannot touch. We have such, we're emotional beings. It's just a way that we can connect to God. And so it's about 83 of us on this call currently right now. So if everyone puts one thing on your mind and when you're praying, I don't want you thinking about that one thing. I want you praying about the one thing for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So don't pray about Praise your God. thing. We, go, we, we have you covered, sis. Mm -hmm. We're going to be praying for your one thing, but you want you to Thank pray you, for the others. And we also have some beautiful sisters on here that have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. We'll be praying for them as mm -hmm. well. So, um, and my Sister Hall, when I'm finished, it just goes back to you, correct? You say it's closing. So okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just jump into our prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as a group of thank sisters you, Lord whose heart you. who's after yours, Lord Jesus, to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies, Lord Jesus. We thank you for how you have watched over us. We thank you, Lord, for even for this precious event, God. Lord, we thank God that it was not done in vain or even for gain, vain glory, Lord Jesus, but it was set aside for our encouragement. It was set aside for us to gain. It was set aside for our own empowerment, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask on today in faith, Lord Jesus, expecting, hallelujah, expecting you to perform that yeah. very thing, yeah. hallelujah, that's on our minds, hallelujah, according yeah. to your will and purpose for our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, let someone on this call today, Lord Jesus, be oh reminded, Lord Jesus, that you are a prayer answering God, hallelujah, yes. and in you, Lord Jesus, there is no failure, hallelujah, and you, there is no fault, Lord Jesus, so whatever the request may be, and our sister is mine on today, Lord Jesus. Honor their request, Lord Jesus. And if you do choose not to, Lord, because Lord, we respect your sovereignty. Lord, if you choose not to honor the request, Lord Jesus, give them the strength, hallelujah, yes, to Lord. press on. Give them the strength, Lord yes, Jesus, Lord. to overcome yes. the challenge, Lord Jesus. Give them the strength to, to accept your perfect will, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you with our whole heart, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us, Lord Jesus, to be about your business, Lord Jesus. Help us to be godly women. You, Hallelujah, to be a light in this dark world, Lord Jesus, as we come before you as a group of sisters, Lord Jesus. Help us yes. to tighten uh, um, among one another, Lord Jesus. Yeah. There is strength in numbers. There's power and unity, yeah. Lord Jesus. So let us endeavor, hallelujah, to be unified, yeah. endeavor to keep the yeah. peace, Lord Jesus. Lord, we praise you in advance. Thank you, yeah. Lord Jesus. Yeah. We praise you in advance for what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Dear sisters on this call, for our families, for our church families, Lord, Lord Jesus, yeah. for our ministries yeah. that we are a part of, Lord Jesus. We're just yeah. looking yes. for you to perform. Lord, we praise yes. you. Lord and Lord, we thank yes. you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 God bless amen. you, God. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Bless God. Be blessed, everybody. Love you. God bless everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless everyone. I enjoyed it. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, you did a beautiful job. My Lord, Barbara Hall, we love you. Great love job. you, love you, love, love you, you all. Love you. God bless you. Yes, glory to God. Bless everyone. Love you all. God bless, love you too. God bless you. you too. God bless everyone. God bless everyone. Jesus. Have a wonderful evening. God bless. God bless. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody wants to leave.
<laughs> my phone is dying. I love y'all. Gotta hang up. Yes, yes. Amen. Barbara. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praying for you. <laughs> Hope you. Hoping you speedy recovery, sis. Oh, real good. I'm not defeated. Amen. 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 Not defeated. They see you, sis. I mean. Be hearing from you, um, Sister Hall. We'll be talking to you. Amen. Love y'all. Love y'all. Thank you, Sister Hall. You did a wonderful, wonderful job. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Y'all yeah. be blessed. I'm gonna go ahead and get off. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. God bless you. God bless you. Love you, love you First Lady. Thank you, Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,